Good stories share the journey. Great stories begin with a setup that inevitably leads to challenges and conflicts that test our mettle. Win, lose, or draw, the outcome ultimately results with an opportunity to help us on our journey. This is the culmination of a personal religious intensity few mortals will ever experience. Started as a temporary monument of God's love in 1984 by Leonard Knight, it grew into a worldwide phenomena you see before you. Born on November 1, 1931 in Shelburne Falls, Vermont, Leonard found religion midlife. He was found frustrated as well. All religions were too complicated for Leonard. He saw it as all very simple. Repent to Jesus and be forgiven for your sins. His struggle for simple faith took him across the United States to end up here in Nyland, and he never left. For just under 30 years, without the benefits of electricity or running water, Leonard passionately labored daily to create a message for the world to hopefully see. God is love. Embarrassed to call himself an artist, Leonard perfected his artistic technique using only what he had at hand, what he could scrounge at the local dump, and what was donated by the faithful or the curious. Leonard left the mountain November 2011, and at the age of 82, went to meet his mentor on February 10, 2014. He always gave his signature two thumbs up, a gesture he clearly hasn't forgotten. Wow. <laughs> the abandoned Marine Barracks Camp Dunlap from the World War II era. In 1961, the Department of Defense deemed the camp no longer necessary. All the military buildings have been removed from the site, leaving only the concrete slabs. These slabs have become the home to travelers from the north, and the site is now known as Slab City. The inhabitants of Slab City are called Slabbers, or Snowbirds, referencing the migration of the Northerners to the South for the winter. I was in Lemon Grove, California, way back, I can't remember the year, about 40, 40, 50 years ago. I was uh, walking away from my sister because she made me go to church. I was 30 years old, n never loved God one minute in my life, just like Saul, just a, hated God, hated church, hated everything. I stopped my truck in Lemon Grove, California. Nobody was around, but just me in the lonesome road. And I started saying, Jesus, I'm a sinner, please come into my heart. I really wanted him in here. There was no playing games with it. Fifty years later, it's on the World Wide Web. The vast Salton Sea, 385 square miles of water, formed by accident back in 1905 when the Colorado River ran wild over man-made dikes. A sea in the desert with its wide, sandy beaches, no tides or dangerous undercurrents. Where success and failure collide, and where utopia and the apocalypse meet to dance a dirty tango, on the edge of a beautifully awful paradise. It was called Technicolor Mountain, Mountain of Love, uh, hundreds of different names, and people just... <clears throat> People decided to call it Salvation Mount. Well, I didn't have a vision. When I came here, I wanted to put God is love to the world on a hot air balloon. And I spent 15 years in Nebraska and Vermont trying to make a hot air balloon. And the thing rotted out on me here and never got up. So I told God I'm going to stay one week and make an eight foot one. 24 years later, I'm still here. <laughs> My name is Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Hi, Bill. Can't forget that. I'm Good. <laughs> Sabrina Schaefer. Hi. Hi, Sabrina. She's from Orange. I live in Brawley. I knew I knew Leonard right after I came here. Oh. Know? And he would drive one of the one of these trucks to the Midwinter Fair. He was the fellow that he always was. He said, "God is love," <laughs> and he just said, In "Invite me to come see my mountain sometime." Well, he. So he just started with a with a dirt bank like the one you see over there. Yes. 
and no education for man whatsoever. So if there's any part of this mountain, it's not, I didn't read it in a book or I didn't push a, a internet push button. And now people, uh, people really think I'm an artist. Museum in here where I've got 9,000 bales of hay in it and I've been working nine years on it. Up by um, Brawley there, they yeah, do have a right. lot of hay, don't they? And then when it dried, he'd come out here because people started bringing him some paint. That paint would be a big deal. But he left paint. here in this in one of these old trucks <laughs> with no water, no electricity, nothing, no sanitation except an outhouse type right. thing. Mm -hmm. But then he, in the early in the morning, to go into Nyland and he'd clean up, and the service stations were very nice to him. He was really a gentleman. Mm -hmm. you know, he he treated people openly and he didn't try to convert you to any religion he just uh, said i want you to come see my mountain and, and over a period of years he built this by himself with very little help painted his mountain with a four inch brush wow four inch yeah exactly man that's all he used he huh. said he said that's all i'm going to use for thank nice you so much you. Yeah. <laughs> you're a really nice gentleman We're not made like gingerbread cookies. If everybody was the same, it'd be kind of be boring, wouldn't it? Everybody's got a different attitude and probably a hundred different ways. <laughs> I don't communicate with churches that are fighting each other. It's too complicated. Let's keep it simple. Do you consider yourself an artist? Do people? No, not at all. I have no art ability at all. Uh, I quit school in the tenth grade. Mm -hmm. I'm stubborn. I didn't read any books for 10 years. I'm just not capable of doing anything, but God Almighty can do anything. And if I've talked to God a lot, and I, I keep a saying almost every morning, God, use me if you can. I want to work for you, God. And look at the mountains going better than 10 churches all uh, put together sometime. Well, I think we're both striving for peace, people loving each other. I want to get a picture of me by his mountain. We live in a country that's supposed to be free. It isn't. Here is freedom. All you need is love. Love. Love is all you need. Keep it simple. God loves us all. Don't get complicated with love. Let's keep it simple. When it comes to paint, I just love paint. Old paint, new paint, pretty paint. And I like latex at first. If I get a pretty color oil, high gloss paint, I keep it for the flowers. People just bring me their paint. I got five gallon buckets, 135 gallon thing. Mm -hmm. So and where do you get the water? How do you get in, the water? Uh, I have it hired in now. First I was me and a bicycle and four wheels. <laughs> uh, four <laughs> handlebars. Four gallons. In 1991, the whole mountain fell down. Uh, I probably had two or three hundred tons of adobe up here. And uh, it was about that time I looked up in the uh, I says, God, you build the mountain. Just don't let Leonard build it. God, you do it. Salt and Sea needs uh, tourism and money. I just let my mountain do my talking. Thank you for the sun. Thank you for the moon. Thank you for the stars at night and the darkness too. So no matter what comes in, I'm excited about it. It takes a lot of pain. And I think I'm exaggerating low on that, because it's really, it, there's a lot of paint on this. Two-thirds of a million gallons. I think that's low. But the paint is as thick as a ply tire on some of them, and I'm still painting, and people are loving me all over the world, it seems like, bringing me paint. God, people are loving me so much, I'm embarrassed. Thank you for loving me. Gathering limbs from the desert is yet another one of his daily tasks. Fred takes old fallen trees and cleans them up, using the branches to support the museum. Cutting the wood can be a challenge to him at over 70 years old, but he figures that with a few good friends to give him a hand, he's having a good time. I'd like to show you something up in here, which is very important, and I didn't know it happened. Right here, when I made all those flowers, it was just fun doing it. No value to it at all. But this had a crack in it right here, and it was weak and flimsy, and I put a flower in there, and it toughened it in like a cement ball. So without me knowing it, every time there's a crack, hee <laughs> hee, guess what? 
I'll put a flower in it and poke it, make it look good, and it strengthens the whole mountain. Sometimes it's, I've had 40 motorcycle groups come in 10 o'clock at night one time and I was really tired and I was kind of grumpy. And they said, well, we all got flashlights, we want a flashlight tour. And it was the most fun I ever had. The farmers got, gives me too much hay because there's a million bales all over the valley and people donate paint and people donate stuff because I donate DVDs to, and you can't out give God. So I'm sitting here with uh, a lot of paint and a lot of adobe and a lot of happiness and a lot of love. I'm gonna have 10 or 15 young kids on the internet putting it in foreign languages. So I'm dumb and I can't do that. All I can do is paint. I don't have to know how to do it. The kids know how to do That's it. Right. The kids know how to push the World Wide Web now and get it on there. I don't know nothing about that at all. I'm not, I just don't know nothing. But the kids know. And by God, I'll tell you one thing, the kids loved it. They loved me a couple of years ago when I said, why don't we keep it simple with God in the first place? He loves us, you know. He loves us first. Lord, I gave them my very best So California's bulldozing This paintbrush from me In 1994, Imperial County Supervisors decided to turn the area into a government campground and charge the snowbirds for using the area. One obstacle stood in their way, Salvation Mountain. Play dirty pool on this, which it's okay with me now. The the state gave me some yellow paint that they use on the highways, and that was toxic. So I'm a toxic nightmare. <laughs> and that got in the paper. Slowly, the battle grew in intensity. Leonard got more and more attention, and the state grew more and more frustrated. The supervisors in this town said, that "We're going to have to go to Sacramento on this, get something bigger." I was a toxic nightmare contaminating the people with lead in the paint and I had to be stopped instantly. They said that and the money was already donated. And, uh, about 14 years ago on the internet, so everybody can check in the whole world, mm -hmm. it cost Sacramento $169,000 to put me in a toxic dump immediately with God is Love Mountain, Salvation Mountain. The state performed soil tests and the results showed that there were contaminants in the soil that would require the mountain to be removed. The turning point came when Leonard hired an independent company to perform the same soil tests for lead and other toxic materials. The results came in a few weeks later. The soil was clean. With the evidence Leonard had presented, the overwhelming amount of letters received, and Leonard's determination to fight it out to the last, the officials finally backed off, leaving Leonard with his mountain and a fortune in free publicity. On May 15, 2002, California Senator Barbara Boxer addressed the United States Congress describing Salvation Mountain as a unique and visionary sculpture, a national treasure, profoundly strange and beautifully accessible and worthy of the international acclaim it receives. The people got more on my side in more papers and uh, movie producers and the museums of the country helped me an awful lot. I don't want the environmentalists back on me again. They're nice and leaving me freedom. Everything is good. Uh, they backed off real good. I can put a thousand gallons of paint on the mountain and nobody bothers me. But it takes a lot of freedom to build a thing like this. Like for eight years, they knew what I was doing, but they just left me alone. Sometimes a country just has to leave a little man alone. I just mind my own business and mix mud and paint. <laughs> Fourteen years later, it's in Congress as a national treasure. Mount Rushmore, the four presidents are number one. Number two is Salvation Mountain, backed up by the Congress of the United States of America, and they'll be there forever. How in the world did I go from a toxic nightmare to God is Love Mountain? Then you got five churches out there. See, you get ten churches. Baptist, Methodist, 
Seventh-day Mormons, you can, uh, uh, there's hundreds of them, thousands mm -hmm. of churches. They're all arguing with you, everybody, and they think that they're the best there is. Well, it's not that simple, Leonard. Boy, it's complicated to know God and Jesus. You have to study, well, hogwash. <laughs> I love all the churches. God bless your heart. You're dedicated. Well, there's going to be a love worldwide story coming down, universal, that the love's going to come down, and it's going to stomp all over hate. And hate is a losing proposition. It's not as big as love. Leonard loves his visitors and treats everyone like an honored guest. Leonard tries to give every visitor a picture puzzle or a video tour DVD. Though the average guest is grateful for the gift, some are more appreciative than others. Yes. Yeah, it looks the same, well, thank huh? you for it's the mountain. Here. Leonard Knight's simple message and abundant faith are an inspiration to many. Leonard's meager life is an encouragement to those without that faith and purpose are the essential elements of a fulfilled life. But even the powerful and wealthy are inspired by Leonard's testimony. Westfall met Leonard in 2008 when he first visited Salvation Mountain. It was the purest ministry I'd ever seen. Um, he didn't have a 401k or a, you know, <laughs> a crystal cathedral. He had, you know, nothing. But he was happy, and he was joyful, and he was loving. You know. When Leonard left Salvation Mountain, everyone wondered about its future. <laughs> Westfall helped organize a board of directors. They are working to preserve the mountain. They received nonprofit status and now hire caretakers to live and work at the mountain for a small stipend. We're going to have some fun today. I can't wait for you to see your mountain. <laughs> Take a look at your mountain. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Been a long time. As visitors came up to say hello and welcome Leonard home, a familiar face appears. I recognize you. <laughs> how are you doing, man? That's Builder Bill. He lives just down the road in Slab City, and he helped Leonard work on the mountain for over 20 years. <laughs> Are you Builder it, Bill? That's me. <laughs> That's me. I thought it was. Hi. He always gave his signature two thumbs up, a gesture he clearly hasn't forgotten. Wow. <laughs> On this day, Leonard also gets to do what he loves best, share his message with the strangers who visit Salvation Mountain. Everybody that came along, thanks a million for coming. You really made my day in a big way. Really. Wow. I feel as if I could roll this right up that mountain next year. <laughs>